Hi everybody, my name is Nathan from Crazy Amazing Design. So I'm here at The Way and tonight we're gonna live stream, okay? So let's look at what does a live stream look like? We have ProPresenter 7 here. Uh, I have a stream output set up. I have a video on that. I have OBS set up right here. So let's go through the steps of what it takes to live stream and create a stream of a night like tonight. We've got like 22 minutes, so we need to get this live stream up and running. Think we can do it, Matt? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so here we are in OBS. Hey, welcome to the studio. I have some thoughts for you. This MacBook Air running OBS is what I'm using as my streaming encoder for today. For a few reasons, I wanna test this Ultra Studio Recorder 3G and see how this computer does with its M2 chip as an encoder. So when setting up a live stream, the cheapest solution is to use a computer as an encoder. However, if you are serious about streaming and the budget allows, dedicated encoders from Resi or BoxCast are absolutely the best solutions. The sole purpose of these devices is to receive an input signal and push that signal to the internet. Inside of OBS here, I have our main output setup. The first thing we need is video. So I've got my Blackmagic uh, Recorder 3G here connected, and I've got an SDI link coming in from the, uh, from the camera that we're using, and then I've got a USB-C connection happening going into the computer. So, uh, just go and create a source, right? A Blackmagic source is when you have the software installed for the Recorder 3G. You can uh, see a source on here, so this is the software. I recently did a video talking about the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G, which is an HDMI slash SDI output device. The Monitor 3G is for video output, the Recorder 3G is for video input, but the software is the same, and to set up the process is the exact same to make it work. It's a great tool to have in your kit. Click on the card in this video to watch that video and see how this device works. So we've got our source, the Blackmagic 3G. I've also got an NDI source. This is coming from the Presenter machine here, streaming over the networks. So this computer running OBS or open broadcast software is currently connected via ethernet to the building's network. The ProPresenter machine is on Wi-Fi, so I only had one ethernet connection, so I decided that the streaming plus receiving NDI would take more bandwidth than just pushing NDI lyrics to the OBS streaming computer. So now I've got graphics and I've got my video and I've got my audio coming in from the camera. Well, that's pretty simple. We're gonna have to look at that camera because there's some crazy stuff happening there. So I have connected a single mono XLR cable to input one on the camera. This is the feed coming from the audio console at front of house. Then audio is coming out of the camera through the SDI cable from the camera and into OBS. The OBS audio mixer is where you can monitor the different audio input sources. So Blackmagic device is where my audio is coming from. I need to make sure OBS knows that this is a mono signal. So it's not stereo where there's a left and right, but it's just a mono, so it's just one side because when audio comes from the camera, only the left channel is the audio input. The right channel is audio from the camera's microphone just so that I have it recorded to the SD card. So in OBS, click the three dots, then advanced audio properties, then under Blackmagic device, set it to mono and adjust the balance so that the direction the audio is coming from is the proper side, so the left or right. So the audio is coming in from there and it's gonna be in this little, little theater right there. Let's go over to ProPresenter. So here is ProPresenter. This is running graphics for the side projectors. I've got my main output, my stream output, and my stage display output here in this little multi-view setup. So I actually have another video in this kind of streaming with ProPresenter 7 series that I went through and talked about how to set up sermon notes. A great uh, tips and tricks for how to set up sermon notes and how to get uh, a stream layer built inside of ProPresenter so that everybody can see what they need to see. So here at The Way, uh, I'll just click on a song real quick. I don't think anyone's looking yet. Uh, here's our song. There's the main out, the stream out, and then the slides come up. So we've got our lower third output. We've got our main output for the screens, and then we've got our stage display, obviously. And then the big deal about this stream output that we built for The Way is when I click on my sermon notes, it creates a main output and a scriptures output. And I'm using looks and macros, and we go into all that in that video. But now that I have this, I said in the beginning of that video that the goal has always been to live stream at The Way. We're not technically officially live streaming. I just kind of set up something for tonight to show how to do it. But this has been the goal of this. So what I'm doing here is I sent an NDI link from this over the network to OBS, and now we have graphics. So at The Way, we just use this one camera, and it's a uh, Panasonic camera with an SDI connection on it. So I have an SDI cable running from here straight to the recorder 
3G that's going into the MacBook. Uh, audio is coming in through one of the XLR ports from the back of our uh, Yamaha QL5 console. So there's a broadcast mix coming to this and that's pretty much it. Well, that felt like a high level pass of what's happening. So here is a further breakdown of what else is going on here at front of house. Most notably, we have a dedicated production network so that everything can communicate together. This way, the lighting, the Dante audio, the NDI graphics can be controlled, sent and received from almost any computer as necessary. This is the switch, the network switch in front of house that connects the lighting computer to the switch. This computer's on that switch, that computer's on this switch. Those two computers would be on the switch, but I don't have enough ports. So there is a connection of the switch going to the stage to the Dante switch. So we have connection to Dante, we have connection to the lighting, and then it's also connecting to the node on stage. Um, Resolume is talking over the network to the lighting console and then the lighting console is talking to the node. That computer is talking to this computer over an NDI link and it's sending lyrics to the lyrics strip up there. So right now it's also, the Resolute machine here is also just talking to the wall and the processors on the wall so that we can send content to and from the stage. This computer is talking with the SDI connections to the projectors on each side of the room. And this computer tonight I have set up as, our, as a live stream. Yep, that's the setup. And uh, then we have audio over here. We have a Yamaha QL5 console for mixing the room at front of house. This console is connected directly to the Dante switch on stage. It's receiving stage inputs from Dante enabled stage boxes and many channels and tracks from Ableton Live over Dante. We use an X32 console on stage to mix our in-ear monitors, so we're actually limited to 32 channels for our ears. With the P16s connected to the X32 for the band, we're also limited further to 16 channels to send audio to the band for their in-ears. So with the full band, realistically, the in-ears can't be assigned more than a stereo two inputs plus click plus cues for four total inputs on the P16s coming from tracks. Since we have Dante, we can send all the tracks separate to front of house. I'd say we have 12 channels as normal. Then in the QL5, we create a mix bus of all of the tracks, and then we send that mix bus back over Dante to be received by our X32 monitor console. And that is how we condense the tracks into a stereo track on the X32 and P16s. Some of the band's in-ear monitor mixes are the wireless packs that are fed directly from mix bus outputs on the monitor console. And other band members are connected to the P16. Oh, and then I'm also, that's actually a really interesting thing to talk about. Time code. This is something I really want to go into, but unfortunately we have already spent too much time on this video. So check out my video where I look at how to send time code audio from Ableton Live over the Dante network to Purpose Center 7 where I'm using it to trigger lighting slides. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the bits where I dove a little deeper and narrated portions of this video. See you next time. Bye.